The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we kick off the trading week. We kick off September. It's Tuesday morning. That was a little bit of recalibration uh, coming off the long weekend there. Happy Tuesday morning. Hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend. As we kick into the action this morning, you got the S&Ps down about four points. We check out the action on a 10-minute basis early this morning, down to about 4,500. We just got quite a little acceleration up to 4,520. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 44 points right now, trading at 15,471. We're trading up 19 points in the Dow at 34,902. And the Russell, negative by 10. You jump over to crude. How about it, right? Crude, accelerating higher, man. Uh, nine o'clock. Not sure what just got said. Somebody have something in the dead man. We just jumped a buck fifty. What was that Tuesday at nine o'clock in the morning in terms of crude catching quite a lift there? We have some action going on. You got the gold contract moving this morning, nineteen fifty eight right now. We jump over to the dollar index when you got commodities moving. Yeah, so what's going on right now? We got action across the board, even in the last few minutes. Dollar was up at almost 105. We pull back a little bit right now to 104.60. You jump over to yields, the story last week, and how about the retracement? How about it? And it's continuing today, down about 12 ticks on Friday. You spike on the jobs number to 11112. We're now a point and six ticks below that number. Pretty remarkable in terms of where we are with. Welcome, folks. We got a switch off here. It's a beautiful thing. Dow, Dow Industrials right now uh, down 41. You get the NASDAQ up uh, 20, S&Ps are down three. Gold, gold contracts down 13.50, trading at uh, 1953. You get silver down 42 cents, $24.14. An ounce light sweet crude, up a buck 15, $86.70 a barrel, notes and bonds. A 10 year note down 16 ticks, trading 110.02. The 30 year up a full point at 119.12 and king dollar, king dollar. Uh, trading up 603 at 104.839. The euro is at 107. The yen is out here trading at a price point of 147. The British pound is at 125 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-66408. Let's take a look at this, folks. We're gonna go, I'm going to go right to the dollar, and this is why. Because, okay, check this out, man. This is pretty intense. So, dollar out here this morning... Friday, we came up to the underbelly of the break downtown. Today, you blew it away. Whoops. <laughs> Hold on one second. I can do this again. You not only blew it away, you went after, not after, you actually broke the swing that it's been trying to do for quite some time. Okay, get this together, Tom, one second, because this is pretty cool, man. And this is what's gonna rule the market today, uh, in, in for quite some time, actually, not just today. Okay, so there's the break. You come back up, you blow it away this morning, right? Now, when you check this out, what you're gonna see is that the number you're gonna keep your eye on out here today is gonna be the 104699. And what you can see uh, happened prior at 7.30 this morning, 8 o'clock this morning, 8.40 to be exact, okay? The bottom line, the dollar dropped out of bed again, like really quick, too. I mean, you know, it, it, this is how it moves. But the bottom line is 8.40. It goes from over the swing point, underneath the, underneath the swing point, okay? That being said, got back over it. Now, when that was doing that, okay, and this is what I want you to wrap your head around. This is because this is what was so interesting this morning when this was happening. The the European market, okay, you know, right now the European market's down anywhere from one tenth of a percent to three tenths of a percent. Well, the European market was flat, and the gold contract, okay, was not getting destroyed. So, what that says to me is that we're going to have a failure inside the dollar today. 
You take a look at the gold contract. We're at uh, 1053 right now. We got down to uh, 1953. We got down to 1950. That being said, that's not a big move because of the fact that you're actually going into strength. And if you're, you know, in gold or silver equities, they're all going into August 29th or August 25th strength. That's what they're doing. Gold contract today, you know, is getting into this number. And then if we go to the S&Ps, what you're going to see is that you talk about moving around. These things are moving around like uh, big time. So we had the S&P get down to 4,500, yet didn't break the overnight low. And you can see if we open this up a bit, sorry about that, folks. I just came in here because I wanted to get this done. Nope, I'll talk to you later. Okay, so if you take a look at this, this is, this is the overnight low. Overnight low out there was, uh, let's see, four, was it 4,500? Yeah, 4,500. We came down to 4501.75. It's going to be a cool day. And then, okay, so if we put this on a, on a daily now, right? What I expect you're going to see out here today is this. You're going to see this: the dollar fail somehow. The spy's already rejected 449.17. This spy is looking to go to its highs. The highs generated out here being the four. Four, yeah, 459.44. We go into the Qs. We take a look at the Qs. Well, first, let's do the NQs. We take a look at the NQs. And what you're going to see with the NQs, they're in the positive, okay? They not only, you know, didn't get down to the lows, they basically came off them with some strength. Yeah, they did. They came off them with some strength. What time was that? Yeah, that's when I was riding here. They came off them with some strength. So now they're challenging the highs of Friday. You take a look at the Qs. Qs want to do the same thing. You know, the Qs have a little bit different setup, but the bottom line is that they want to do the same thing. So now what you're going to have in the Qs is that you rejected 375. You're at 378.99. The last high out here happens to be the 387.90. That thing wants to get banged, you know, so we'll see how this is shaking out. Some of the oh, bonds, we're going to do the bonds, because the, what the bonds are doing, bonds, the gold and gold, were doing the same thing, meaning they were coming into, let me show you here, they were coming into, they came into the strength, and now I get a better understanding about the volume, so you're going to see they're coming in with tremendously lighter volume. They're coming into the strength of the 29th as well as the 25th. And you're going to need a lot more sellers there because you can see that's where we're coming in right here. That had 2.72 million contracts. Right now you've only done 946,000. So we'll end up doing about 1.7, probably 1.6. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow. The Dow Industrials right now is trading down 37. We get the NASDAQ up 21. S&P's down two and a half. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 35. Nasdaq's up 22. S&Ps are off three. Let's go inside the Dow first and take a look at the strength versus the weakness. And you got to remember something, folks. You're still in window dressing right now, so you know you can get some movement out here. Point-wise, what we have is this: you have uh, Microsoft putting 36 positive points. I is that IBM? Yeah, IBM. No, no. You went. Yeah, the United Health putting 35. You got Chevron putting uh, 10. Taken away from it, you have uh, Home Depot minus 28. You got uh, Goldman Sachs minus 18. Caterpillar minus 12. Inside the NDX 100, what do we have? Inside the NDX 100, you got Airbnb. That's a big move. We'll pull that up. Uh, up 8%. You got Tesla up 3.2. Netflix is up 2.7. Taken away from it, Illumina is down 5.2. You got uh, Sirius Satellite up 2.6. So let's go to Airbnb first and take a look at Airbnb. So you got Airbnb up 10.5%. Uh, That's a big move. What they have, what they do out here. So, yeah, bottom line is that uh, they're just buying it. That's the buy. That's what it comes down to. That's what it looks like. And let's go take a look at Netflix. Sorry, I'm still not sure about that. Stop it. Netflix. N F L X. You take a look at Netflix. Netflix is up twelve ninety five. Now Netflix also has a high volume high, folks, so that's gonna be going after that high volume high. We put this on a weekly. And yeah, you can see it's sticking out like a sore thumb. Actually Netflix is an ABC up. Look at this. So your B point on Netflix here is four. Yeah, four fifty six. That's a beauty. Three fifteen. That's a big one, man. That's going to give you uh, about five, five thirty. What's up here? Yeah, Netflix and ABC up to five thirty, 
And, you know, on Netflix right now, folks, okay, you have the, the Big Shot, okay, which is a great movie, folks. I watched it last night. Um, and it goes to, you, you want to watch it if you haven't seen it yet. It, it goes to, to the heart of Wall Street and the corruption and the fraud inside the mortgage market and the, the terror, the terror, actually. You know, these guys end up making money, but I'm sure a lot of them didn't. The terror in order to stay in that trade, because what had happened, and I remember this so well, man, because here, let me show you something. Because I, I remember when this was happening, because I was shot, I was shot the, the home builders myself. So watch this. This is what had happened. This was so deviant, it was unbelievable, actually. So we pull this up. I go back. I go back. I got to go back, what, 15, 20 years now, right? It's hard to comprehend. Is that it right there? It was 2007. My God, I can't believe it's that long ago. So weird. It seems like yesterday. Okay, so here it is right here. So let me spread this out a little. So this is Toll Brothers, right? And what had happened is that the, the mortgage market started falling apart. And this was the end of 2005. And what you, what you had is that you still had Toll Brothers, all these, all these home builders were going to highs, even when it was falling apart. And they show basically in the movie about how the actual banks were holding up the, well, the banks could mark to market themselves. They, they had the ability on the CDOs and the um, mortgage-backed securities, the MBSs, to, mark, to market themselves. And the market's falling apart, but yet they decided that they're going to start marking the, them up instead of down. Okay? So check it out. I'll just go through this kind of slow so you can understand what happened here. So they're mocking them up, even though they knew that they were worth less money, because if you were, you were they were trying to, well, oh, that's the first part. Second part is that the rating agencies, you know, they, they show that a couple of these, you know, firms went to the rating agencies, meaning the firms that were going to shot them. They, they hadn't gone shot yet, but they were basically doing homework to say that, okay, man, there's something wrong here, okay? They go to the rating agencies, and then they show... Um, one of the rating agencies, how the rating agencies weren't even looking into what was in the tranches. So inside a tranche, okay, inside the MBS, okay, inside the whole structure, you know, so you have, you have one vehicle that's trading. Inside that vehicle, you have thousands of mortgages. Some of them are AAA, some of them are AA, some of them are B, and that's how, they weren't supposed to be under B, even they, was, they were saying that the subprimes would be at that particular point. And the agency, you know, I don't know if this actually happened, but in the movie it happened. The agency says that, well, you know, if we don't give them a triple A, they're just going to walk down the street, which is right a block away, and the other agency is going to give it to them. Okay. So this kept going on, but this went on for two years when the market was falling apart. They show that, you know, what it took to stay in this trade, the, they were sending people you know, down into Florida, into Arizona, and they were, when they were coming into these developments, right, one development had 225 houses. There were only four houses that were occupied. The houses that were occupied, the people were paying their rent, but of course, you know, the landlord wasn't paying it. And though that tranche, all those mortgages, were inside, you know, this one, basically, security. Then they showed, and this was the kicker, man. Then they went to the mortgage brokers, okay, that was selling the mortgages to Wall Street. And they were interviewing the mortgage brokers. And the mortgage brokers at that particular point, like, were living high off the hog and beyond belief. And they asked them, that they say, okay, you know, the brokers are explaining that, listen, I'm selling to immigrants, I'm selling to strippers, 
I'm selling. There's nothing wrong with any of these people. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but the bottom line, each one of these are buying five houses, right? <laughs> and, and if they closed the house on a Friday, Wall Street would buy that mortgage off them on Monday. And if they sold them a regular conventional mortgage, right, the, the broker would, on a $500,000 house, the broker would only make $2,000. If they sold them an adjustable, they would make 10000 And so the first guy that caught on to it was Michael Berry. And on these adjustables, they knew that they were going to readjust on 2007. And the rest, not the rest is history. I'll come back to this in a second. But it was about as wild as you can get because one of the best parts of the movie is actually the synthetic CDOs. And I'll explain what a synthetic CDO is when we come back. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. To Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 54. You got the Nasdaq off uh, four. S&Ps are up seven. So a CDO, CDOs, collateral debt obligation, folks, right? And those CDOs, they had to start making those because they, they were, they were bad. They were worse than they couldn't put them in the mortgage-backed security. So they decided to make a CDO. Now watch how this worked. This is amazing, man. So let's picture that uh, you and I are making a bet, right? I think that. 
uh, something's going to go up. You think that something's going to go down. Um, you know, and the reality is, is that the first bet is $10 million. Okay. So you're, you're, you're going to the bank. You, you think that uh, this CDO, okay, has a bunch of junk in it and you feel that it's going to go down. Well, the, the bank will take your money and you want to bet 10 million on it. Okay. So you bet 10 million on it. At that particular point, because the bank and other people at that particular point think that there's no way this is going down, this is going to go up because it's a lopsided deal. That everyone thought it was a lopsided deal. Okay, meaning that hey, this is the banks thought it was a no-brainer. I was I want to sell these all day long. Well, then what the banks decided to do is go market the CDO and say, hey, listen, we have a client that just marketed this particular that, that just bought this particular trade. And do you want to buy a trade on this trade? So the first trade is out there at 10 million, okay? The next trade, and the client would say, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll, go, I'll go 30 million on that one. So I'm gonna go 30 million at three to one, okay? So that's the synthetic CDO because the, the predication is on the first CDO, which is a synthetic CDO also, okay? But no, no, the first one wouldn't be. The first one actually is trading on the CDO itself. So you get the mortgage, then you get what that mortgage, what the CDO would do. You get the, you get the CDO, what the CDO would do. The second one is on 30 million. And then they did a third one. Then they did a third one at 50 million. Okay, I'm, now these numbers, I'm just giving you these numbers, but, it, but percentage wise, this is, the, this is how it shook out. So now you have on one CDO that started, that only has 10 million in it, okay, you're at approximately 100 million. That's the derivative aspect of Wall Street. And that's the, and most of us know what the derivatives are, you know, that that's what, you know, that's what ended up bringing the whole system down. Okay, so now picture, that, that's one portion of it. The second portion, and this is where this got really intriguing, is that these two young guys that, uh, the name of the company was Brownfield. These two young guys started in their garage with $110,000. They had brought $110,000 up to $31 million in four years by betting on events. In the op they used options to bet on long-term events that people didn't think could happen. Um, bottom line, $31 million on Wall Street wasn't enough to get them where they wanted to be, meaning that they wanted to do a bigger bet and you need a couple hundred million to do that. Well, what happened is that one of the guy's neighbors had already retired from Wall Street because he was disgusted with it. They call this guy up and they call him up and they explain what they think is the trade of the century. But the trade they did, okay, is more intense. The trade they did was picture inside of this mortgage-backed security. You have the mortgage-backed security and they start out with double A's. Everyone was basically betting against the aspect of the whole trench going, meaning the mortgage-backed security going. And by the time that, you know, they really figured out what they wanted to do, Wall Street was getting a little leery of, of basically going against the B's because they said, ah, that could probably go. No one was going against the A's. And what they figured out is that, no, the double A's are not double A's, the double A's are also subprime, okay? So they, those are, they, they call this guy Ben. Bottom line, he listens. He says, yep. He says, you're right. You're absolutely right. We're going to do it. They get together with him. They shot the double A's. Now, as they shot the double A's, what does end up happening is this. Now, this was right up until, if you remember, first it was Lehman that was going down the tubes, okay? Then it was Bear Stearns, okay? Right up to almost that day, right? They show the heartache that all these trades were. Because these trades were go on, going on for about two years. These guys had to come up with millions of dollars to stay in the trade, right? Because Wall Street was so crooked. That's the real bottom line. And this is why, this is what Wall Street did. This is how it, this, Wall Street finally decided that, oh no, man, we gotta unload all of this junk to the public. 
This is so disgusting, it's unbelievable, folks. So what ends up happening is that they don't show how Wall Street unloaded it to the public, okay? But the bottom line, they loaded it to the public by ETF structures, all the rest of the above. They have everyone buying, buying, buying. And once Wall Street got as much out as they could, they didn't get enough out because we know all the banks went corrupt and we, you know, went kaput and we had to come up with all the money, meaning the taxpayers. So what ends up happening is that right as this was a week before Bear Stearns went down, Still to that point, their trade wasn't in the positive. It's still been in the negative. And they have one of these main guys up on a stage going against a bull and a bear. And the, the, the bear is explaining that, yes, he's on that side, but it's terrible because no one in the audience, he has all the bankers in the audience, and no one in the audience really understands that the whole economy is going to blow up, that people are going to lose their jobs, People are going to lose their houses, all because of the fraud on Wall Street. So as this is happening, that was the day that, Wall, that Bear Stearns goes down 38% in 10 minutes when he's talking. Okay? Now, Alan Greenspan was supposed to come up next. Well, what they show is that everyone takes off out of the place. The moderator saying, oh, well, we got Alan Greenspan coming up next. Okay, the bottom line is that they were not only correct in the assessment, the triple A's went, as soon as the triple A's went, and they showed how every single bank was still holding the bag on billions and billions, and it was the banks, you know, that basically created all the product, sold the product, knew they were selling the product, and here's the kicker. Out of all of the people in all the banks, right, they showed that only one person went to, went to jail. And this was some poor guy from Credit Suisse that didn't mock to market two billion in bonds, that he mocked them in the wrong way. And <laughs> they were showing that the banks were, <laughs> were doing 20 million a day, 20 billion a day, like not even thinking about it. Now here's the real kicker, folks, okay? The mortgage-backed securities are back. Well, first, first you had the, um, the banks beat all the regulation. Okay, they took the money, beat the regulation, and the mortgage-backed securities with subprimes in them came back 2015. In 2015, they just named them something else. Take that. After you, you're gonna be really, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's whopped. I was whopped before, but now I'm really whopped on the banks. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Get the Dow down 61, Nasdaq's off 22, S and P's are off 11. We'll come right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today.
tfnn.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials down 69. Nasdaq's off 24. S&Ps are off 11 and a half. And let's go take a look at this oil market because oil's been on a tear. Yeah, it's, an, it's on an ABC up already, and it, this is following through. So you got oil up 215, 313,000 contracts. That's big contract volume. So bottom line, this thing wants to move, man. And you got to remember some A to B equals C to D. The A to B is normally a straight line move. Now, this one here, this hardly ever did a retracement either. You know, this is a shot retracement. It's, I don't even think it's a 0.382 retracement. Yeah, it was just a 0.382. So you get the, what are we at? It's 84, 69, right? So you got 15. Yeah, 77, 87, 93. They're at 87 right now, 93's game. And you can see the expansion of volume is big, man. I mean, you know, we did, was that yesterday, even though we're close? Yeah, I think it was. So you get big volume happening here. We go. Let's go to the XLE and see how that's shaking out in the XLE. Because pump-wise, we're going to be paying for fuel again, evidently. So the XLE, let's put this on... Uh, didn't do an ABC up on the daily. Let's take a look at the weekly. And the weekly would be, yeah, it would be this week, the shot week. Oh, I see what you have here. So you're definitely going for the highs. The highs were 91.95. 94.93 is the number. Now, the, in the context of the XLE, now there's some divergence here. And what it is, is that it just doesn't have the volume right now. I mean, in fact, it's dropping off pretty dramatically. So we'll see how this shakes out because the last high, so pitch this, the first high in the XLE had 770 million. The second high when we failed had 552. Well, we only came into that with 417. That's not how you end up breaking highs. So. It looks to me like it's going to get up there again, but it doesn't look to me like it's going to hold. That's how that's basically setting up right now. Let's go take a look at some of the uh, high flyers. Well, AMZN, because now, believe it or not, you're going to start talking about holiday traffic. You get Amazon's down a buck seventy. That has a high volume high though from a few week, few months ago. Let's see on a weekly what we're looking at. So you're, you're coming up to the the downdraft, that's what's stopping Amazon right now. It's just, I mean, if you want to see how ice holds, it's pretty intense. And you can see the same deal, you know, when on the, on the, on the weekly, you were coming down with 600 million, and even when we went up, we went up with 375. On the monthlies, That's 1.4. Now, the monthly looks a little bit better. You know, it's still not as much. 1.4 versus 1.2 last month. 
and the 1.2 is going against 1.1. So the monthly doesn't look bad. It's going to take a few more months, though, but Amazon has a few more months in order to get through this area. Let's go to Apple and take a look at Apple because Apple is going after these highs once again also. Apple right now is just off its highs. We put this on a monthly. Yeah, see, a Apple broke its highs and broke them with light volume. On a monthly, we did 1.3 billion versus 2.1. Yeah, so, I mean, leave it Apple. Apple will probably test its highs. I mean, we're, we're at 189, you're talking about 198. But this is going to need a lot more juice in order to hold higher price. And Google... The way Google's shaking out. Google's going into 565 million with 463, which isn't bad either. Now the animal, NVIDIA. NVIDIA put this on a monthly. Yeah, <laughs> this is a high volume high. Even, the, the, you know, this is parabolic, but guess what? That's a high volume high, man. So that's going to get tested again. That's 502. We'll see where this shakes out. But right now, no matter which way you look at NVIDIA, you know, if I take this, see, NVIDIA, it wouldn't be a ABC up. Because when you do an ABC up, if you if they have big gaps, which we have here, you got to use the bottom of the gap. You you don't go all the way down to the end. So I use the bottom of the gap. You're going to see that when we went to a high, we did a 0.76 retracement from the bottom of the gap to the high of not last high, the high before that. You come down. That's not an ABC up. And NVIDIA right now, at these numbers, now these, these were, it's still trading at 112 forward PE, but when you look at their revenue, this is where this gets wild, man. You know, they went from 7 billion to 13 billion. They expect to go to 16 billion in the next quarter, 17 billion in the next quarter. And if we just talk about the next quarter at 16 billion, that's in 90 days. That's the quarter coming up. And they did only 16.7 billion all of 2021. And then that's, that's on the gross. If you look on what they're bringing down to the bottom line, well, they're bringing it to the bottom line too. You know, last year they made $3.24. They're doing three times that this year, $10.64. So that doesn't look to me like that's done yet at all. In fact, you know, because if you remember when Nvidia came out with their numbers, they came out two billion more in 90 days than what they basically had said prior to that and what the analysts thought prior to that. So, yeah, they're, they're large numbers. This is all about AI, but you know, guess what? AI, the spending's gonna be a monster deal on AI. And coming up in the next quarter, is gonna be a huge heads up to see if you get two follow, if you get two quarters in a row where the spending on AI goes up that, uh, that dramatically. That, that's gonna make a huge difference. Let's go take a look at the silver market out here. Because all these gold and silver stocks, as I said at the beginning of the program, are doing the exact same thing. They're coming back into August 29th and August 25th. So if we take a look at silver, silver's come back with 77,000 contracts. Silver maybe the 23rd, let me see. I have to go to the SLV for silver because we were, they were, that was changing contracts also. So you get the SLV coming back with 6.1 million. Uh, yeah, you fill in this gap. You're coming into 12 and 24. So that gap looks like it's going to be filled. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 63. Nasdaq's off 23. S&P's down 10 and a half. Now, it's all about this dollar today, folks. Keep this number in place. 104.699. Uh, we've hit 104.907. Right now, you're trading 104.711. Because you can see, wherever the dollar goes, like the first leg down on the dollar, when it did give it up, that's when you saw the S&P actually only go minus 2. The dollar goes back up, and what ends up happening is that the S&P gets to, it was bigger than that, actually. It was, uh, yeah, the S&P got down to this uh, 4501 when it went back up. It goes back down, the S&P got to the 4520, so nine points above. You can, we almost went flat. Now, right now, it's teetering once again. It's at 104.692. And the 104.699, what that is, folks, okay, that is the swing point that it's been trying to get to for quite some time. You know, it not only what it did here, and this was so deviant, it, you know, you broke with conviction. It comes back up Friday before we took the Labor Day break, right at the line. And then today, it blew, not only blew by the line, it blew by the line with strength, meaning it was wide price spread. It took out the swing point, okay? And that's the number I'm giving you is the 104.699. So you can see how if you're trading foreign currencies, how you, you can get whipped like beyond belief as, as, as the S&Ps because it's going tick for tick for the S&Ps. 
So where that dollar finishes out today, that's where that market's going to finish out. That dollar finishes above the 104.699, you can expect the market to be down slightly. You know, you can see that it's it's not reacting heavily, okay? It's not that not that heavily. But if it goes under that 104 699, you will see those S&Ps turn positive. Have a great day. Have a safe day. Stay right there, folks. We got uh, Think of Swim coming up next. Then we get our man, Mr. Larry Pezzavento. Uh, Jacob's going to be doing my show this afternoon. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one.